Well, hello there. Can you hear me? Tap, tap. All right. Sounds like the mic is on. Um, I'm in my cozy little office in my cozy sweater, what I'm calling pandemic vestments, but I'm here for the jam and we're actually going to have some fun. So shall we? Now, uh, it is the jam. I saw some graffiti, so I thought this little video would be sort of apps at the mood for this whole event. I don't know. I thought it was kind of cool, so I hope you do as well. But formalities aside, let's go. My name is Henri, as you could tell. Uh, my Twitter handle is Henri Alvedica if you ever want to get in touch with me online. And I run the Jamstack Toronto Meetup. Now, uh, I'm going to talk about this logo for a second because I thought it's the nicest one around. In fact, if you ever see a bell at the top of my slides or top right corner anyways, and it jiggles like that, it means you should take a screenshot and share it on Twitter. So hopefully you will. Thank you very much. Last person, uh, last thing I'd like to say is, before I get started, Thank you to Brian over at CFE and the good people at FITC for having me. It's always a pleasure working with you guys. So let's go. And performance for all, understanding a lighthouse score. Now, we're here to talk about performance. It's something that I consider a bit of a dark art, but luckily, or lucky for you, I'm here to shed some light and kind of point you in the right direction. All right. We're going to have some fun. Now, since the mid 2000s, we've been doing a lot of work to try to understand performance as much as possible. Now, we concluded that it was a user experience story. Now, unfortunately, user experience is such an tangible, wouldn't you say? So we actually had to create these tangible metrics uh, in order to sort of create this little fix. And in fact, these metrics would in fact reflect the UX. Now, in order to get that done, we have to create some tooling. And we're gonna go through some of these tools through a little bit of a historical timeline. Things started off with Firebug, a fantastic tool that, would that was introduced actually at a meetup in 2007 by Joe Hewitt, very influential at the time. That followed up by Wyslow, something else that was also fairly influential, gave you a grade from A to E or A to F uh, on your site's performance. Uh, shout outs to uh, Steve Siders. Now, that followed up by web page tests, a tool that is being used right now today. And in fact, it's considered the Cadillac of performance testing. Um, it was actually acquired recently by, I think it was Catchpoint, I believe. Uh, so look for that tool or this tool to even blossom that much more. Now, if you use browsers, hopefully you use browser dev tools as well. Believe it or not, it's actually very powerful tooling to debug a page's performance. So if you ever get into the weeds, browsers browser want to get into the weeds, pardon me, browser dev tools are really good. But we are here to talk about Lighthouse. Now, Lighthouse launches a sequence of audits. Now, uh, among these audits is that famed performance Lighthouse score. Now, believe it or not, some people are actually out on Twitter sort of bragging about their scores from time to time. Now, right here, what you can see is uh, West Boss had been tooling around with Gatsby and some images, and he was able to get 99. Here we have uh, Guillermo out of uh, Vercel and Next.js fame, and he was actually also working on some, um, some performance scoring, and he was able to get some scores across the globe all into the 90s. And speaking of the globe and the world, someone here had been experimenting with Lighthouse after discovering it in a workshop, and they were able to get 84 on their score. So congratulations. Now, we are here to talk about the Lighthouse score, and it's calculated by way of metrics. Metrics are measurements. Yes, correct. Lighthouse is governed by weights and measures. But unfortunately, some of these weights are, or some of these metrics, pardon me, are weighted differently. And thus, some will be a bit more important than others. Let me give you a quick example. Last summer, I was able to run uh, 21K in just under an hour and 29 minutes, and that uh, resulted in a 411 pace. Once upon a time, the distance was my primary metric, but now it's actually my pace. My pace is how I regard how healthy I am and how good I feel about a run. Lighthouse and the score is essentially going to be the same thing. Uh, the metrics are made available and some will have greater weight than others. As such, a large amount of your performance score will come from a few metrics. We're going to talk about that. Now, the performance score, uh, we're going to talk, we're going to go through the metrics in order of appearance. Essentially, when you do a audit, uh, the results are going to appear in the following way. Now, these performance metrics are essentially what we're going to talk about. 
Let's start. FCP or First Contentful Paint. FCP measures how long it takes the browser to render the first piece of DOM content after a user navigates to your page. All right, so what that means is essentially the first speckle of color outside of white, uh, the first font, the first image that shows up, that's going to be your FCP. Now below that, you can see the timings. Anything two seconds or faster is considered good. Anything four seconds and slower is considered as needing work and anything in between this two, they call it moderate. I'm going to call it meh. Following that, we have the speed index. One of my favorite uh, metrics, in fact. The speed index measures how quickly content is visually displayed during a page load. Now, below, you can see the uh, timings that are involved with that. The largest contentful paint, or LCP for short, reports the render time of the largest image or text block visible within the viewport. Very important metric, keep it in mind, and you can see the timings below that are involved. Time to interactive. Now, TTI measures how long it takes a page to become fully interactive. Now, that seems a little sort of simple, but it's actually a little bit more complicated. It actually involves uh, some long tasks and uh, a five second window of like no activity. I'm going to share the link so you'll be able to deep dive a little further into what's involved there. Total blocking time or TBT for short measures the total amount of time that a page is blocked from responding to user input. Now this is vaguely connected and related to the TTI. And here we have, again, uh, when it comes to interactive metrics, it's a little bit com more complicated than a one sentence answer. Uh, I'm going to share the links and you'll be able to see exactly what's involved with that. Lastly, the CLS or cumulative layout shift. It measures the sum total of all individual layout shift scores for every unexpected layout shift that occurs during the entire lifespan of a page. In English, it really comes down to jank. Uh, you know how a page jumps up and down when you load it? Well, they created an index that will indicate uh, the degree of jank that's involved. And you can see the index down below in the, uh, the grading. Now, what about these weights? Do you even lift, bro? Let's find out. Now, uh, weights are important and can, in fact, inform how you're going to sort of like debug your page. Now, um, we're going to look at these weights right now. Starting with the CLS, it's actually only worth 5% of your score. So no matter how badly the CLS goes, the worst you can get is 0 out of 5. Hopefully, you're not getting that. Following that, though, we start to get into the weeds here. Speed index, first contentful paint time to interactive, worth 15% each. Now we're starting to get into the heavy weights of the metrics. Uh, very important to understand how these things go so that you know where to spend some of your time. And lastly, LCP, TBT, worth 25 each. So together, that's 15 per, uh, 50 pardon me, percent of your score. So these two right here, you must pay attention. I consider them P1s. Now, you can see at the top right corner, there was a bell and it was jiggling, so you know what to do. As I mentioned not too long ago, a large amount of your performance score will come from a few metrics. So getting back to this, you'll see that these two, they are a must in terms of paying attention. And again, I get back to the point that they are considered in my books a P1. Let's look at some additional data. Would you know what the median lighthouse score is? Well, for those who speak Spanish, 49, 49 pour ceux qui parlent français. And as you can see at the top uh, right corner, there's the bell and it's jiggling. And this is correct. The median lighthouse score is a failing grade at 49. Now, if we look at the uh, scores across the web, and once again, you can see at the top right corner, the bell and it's jiggling. But more importantly, Almost, actually, almost 2.2 million sites are getting a score between 25 and 50. And in fact, just over 550,000 sites are getting a score of 10 to 25. This is heartbreaking. By the way, some of this data was collected, or all this data was collected uh, by uh, through the HTTP archive, uh, where you can see a treasure trove of data about how the web is operating and how it was built. Now, uh, a last graphic to sort of like summarize this whole information. Once again, uh, at the top right corner, you have the bell and it's jiggling. You can see in more familiar color coding uh, what this means. 
50% of your sites, uh, of the sites across the web right now, absolutely need work or basically are just failing. Uh, 40% are moderate, only 11% are doing very well. So there is some work to do. Now, in conclusion, we have six metrics to optimize. These aren't rules, but they're rigorously research recommendations, what I like to call guidance. Uh, we also know that each metric weight affects the lighthouse score. So the key really is to optimize for your immediate use case, just like how I used to look at the distance for my running. Now I look at the pace. Now, hopefully um, when you're all done, pardon me, you'll be able to sort of regale and dance on the ceiling like this gentleman right here. Speaking of this gentleman, this is uh, Adolfo Quinones, AKA Shabadu. He was actually part of a very influential film that came out back in the eighties called Breakin'. And again, I'm kind of staying with the theme. By the way, rest in peace. He unfortunately passed away uh, this past December. So I just wanted to bring that up. Anyhow, merci. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Henri. Once again, you can find me on Twitter at Henri Helvetica if you have any questions. And won't you join Jamstack Toronto? I think you should. Cheers.